Today, we have a really interesting paper about a really important result in number theory. The paper is just a one-line proof that there are infinitely many prime numbers. A prime, a prime number, as you probably know, is a number uh, greater than one that is just divisible by himself and by number one. So prime numbers are like 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. There have actually been a lot of famous mathematicians that came up with their own proofs for this result, including Euclid, Euler, or even Paul Erdos. However, as far as I know, um, this is probably one of the shortest proofs. And what I really like about this proof is that, first of all, it's just one line. Second of all, the only thing that you need to know in order to understand this proof are some basic properties of integers and the sine function. And finally, this proof was, this paper was written in 2015 by Sam Northfield, which means that there are still, even today, there, are sti there, there is still some low-hanging fruit in such complex fields as number theory, and that's, uh, that's super exciting for me. So uh, the proof is something like this. So if the set of primes is finite, then we have a quantity that is greater than zero that is the product over all the prime numbers of sine of pi over p that is equal to the product of over the all prime numbers of sine of pi times one plus two product again of all over all prime numbers divided by prime number p and this is equal to zero. So as we can see here, this is a contradiction. We have something that is at the same time equal to zero and greater than zero, which means that our initial assumption that the set of, of all the, the prime numbers is finite is actually wrong. So how are we going to prove this? I know that this is definitely not obvious how we get to this result. And so we are going to prove this, um, you know, we first should look at this inequality, then we're going to prove that these two terms are equal, and finally that this is equal to zero. So let's start here, and let's first draw the sine function. The sine function starts at zero, then goes to one at pi over two, final, then goes back to zero at pi, goes to minus one at three over two pi, finally goes back to zero at two pi, and one of the properties of, of the sine function is that it actually repeats itself with a period of 2 pi. So each of these segments is uh, 2 pi long. And so if we look here, each term here is sine of pi over p, with p equals 2, 3, 5, 7 prime numbers, is going to be located in this section here. So since the sine function is always positive between 0 and pi, this means that all these terms here are going to be positive, and a finite product of positive numbers is going to be positive. So this term here is actually greater than 0. It is really important to notice that this product, is, this is a finite product and not an infinite product, because infinite products can converge to zero even if all the terms are positive. And so this is the fact that allows us to, to conclude that this is greater than zero. So the first part was accomplished, we proved that this is greater than zero, so let's prove now that this term here is, ex is equal to this term. So we are going to do that um, by using a a product that uh, a property that we've talked before that is the period periodicity of the sine function so we 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 know that the sine function repeats itself in, in every 2 pi and so we can write that the sine of x is actually equal to the sine of x plus 2 pi times k 
where k is just an integer 0, 1, 2, etc. So what we are saying here is that the sine function repeats itself um, you know, in multiples of 2 pi. So how is this going to be helpful? If we take this term here and we multiply it pi by 1 and 2 times the product over all the prime numbers we get, And so if we look at this term here, this term is going to be just the product over all the, all the prime numbers in our set of prime numbers over a specific prime number p. Of course this product here of all the prime numbers in our set of prime numbers is going to have p. And so if um, we can write it as p1, uh, p, p, n divided by p, which means that this product here is just going to be all the prime numbers except p, which in particular this result is going to be an integer. Since this is going to be an integer, it is not difficult to see that using the property of the, using this property of the sine function, this here is going to be equal to this. So finally, what we want to prove now is that this term is going to be equal to zero. And how are we going to do this? We are going back to, our, to the sine function that we drew and we are going to see that the zeros of the, the sine function are located in 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on. So the zeros are all of the form x equal m times pi with m equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. an integer. And so what we need to show is that at least one term in this product, at least one of these terms is going to be an integer. If we prove these, we prove that the sine of this number times pi is a zero of the sine function, so we have the result zero. If we take a look at this number, one, plus 2 product over all the primes, this is just a regular integer. In particular, uh, since all being integers can be decomposed um, in prime factors, there is at least one prime, p, that divides this number here, which means that if we take that prime number that divides this integer this result here, it's going to be an integer. And so, since this is going to be an integer, an integer times pi is going to be one of the zeros of the sine function. So, this result, the product, if one of the terms is a zero, the product is going to be a zero, and we finally got to the contradiction that we wanted and so we have a result that is at the same time zero and then greater than zero, which proves that the set of prime, of prime numbers cannot be finite and there, mu there must be infinitely many prime numbers.